Happy Halloween. Day 41. 2,000 years ago, the Celtic tribe of Ireland would do a celebration, and it was named Samhain. It was to celebrate the end of their harvest. On November 1, it was the first day of the new day coming forward. They would dress costumes and, and hope that when the ghosts would come down, they wouldn't be taken by the ghosts. Uh, as it went forward, the name was Oween Hollow. So it was uh, different, but it evolved into the name of Halloween. And as the years went on, it was uh, different, turned into a trick-or-treat. Well, at that point, the trick was, uh, I'll uh, wax your window and I should give a treat for candy of some sort. So that went on for, for years and uh, it reminds me of a funny story that when our kids were younger, we had, uh, uh, well actually Beth did a mannequin and it was a, uh, sat in a chair right outside the door and it had a wire on the arm so it could be lifted up and people could go, oh my God, I think it's, it's alive. Well, anyways, this one fellow came back or came in and he had a big mask on his face and he could barely see anything. So just on his peripheral though, the arm was, appeared to be waving at him. Well, shoot, he turned around and split for about 10 feet. And he said, oh, that's not very scary. So we came back to the house and he uh, rang the bell. And at that point, I had put on my monkey mask. Uh, it was a full head mask, uh, very, very live. So I would crouch down behind the door and this young fella, he was ringing the bell again and I would be down low and I would scratch the door. And then I'd opened up just a little and he was figuring that it should be an adult that's gonna be giving, handing candy down. Well, as I opened up the door to about four or five inches, this young fella saw the monkey man. Well, <laughs> he kept turning and ran and he never stopped. He went up a couple of uh, groups of people that are trick-or-treaters and he yelled at him, he goes, you know, don't go at the end of the cul-de-sac because that's where the monkey man lives. Well, as it turned out, I would do that for years on coming. So when I would meet people or their kids as they grew up and I was always known as the monkey man. Well, at any rate, thanks for watching and stay tuned. Live from Cave Creek, Arizona, it's that painting show starring the Color Queen. <laughs>
look for the yellow signs on the road with a lizard on them. That is hidden in the hills. Before I get too much to telling you about what's new for the year, Dr. John, who is today's lucky duck? Our lucky duck is Michael from Payson. Okay, Michael. Michael happens, just happens to be John's cousin, by the way. <laughs> he said, I just watched your video for the very first time. You guys are funny. Well, I'm glad you watched, Michael. Keep watching. I wanted to tell you I have something I need to finish up here, and that is a commission for some painted chairs for a client. She'll be coming back soon, so I want to make sure I have them finished. But I thought I could show you my process. Might be interesting if you ever feel like painting a chair or anything that's just not a canvas. These are the two chairs. That one's almost finished. Um, when you're going to paint fabric, it's best to seal it. I have a product called Flex Gel that I get from Nova Color where I buy my paint. But you can buy a product like this at any local craft store. You brush it on and seal the fabric. But first, more importantly, Masking tape, painter's tape, paper towels, plastic, whatever you want. Cover the areas around where you're going to paint so you don't ruin their or your own um, um, chairs. Another tip is to mix plenty of paint when you're going to be painting a large surface. It's wise to do that rather than waste, it's better to waste paint than it is to, to uh, run out because it's hard to mix exactly. So I use chalk to sketch. That makes it easy. Also, if you want to change your mind when you're sketching, you just wipe it off with a paper towel, damp paper towel. Let's see your hair. Take your hat off. There it there, is. There, I can see your face now. Yeah. That's, red. It is you. Very red. Yes. I think I look good in red. I might just have my hair I off. think you need a cut. Yes. <laughs> and a color. Next if week. you come back, and it's red, that's gonna be pretty pretty cool. Pretty cool? Will you recognize me? <laughs> well, it's, um, it's the, uh, the uh, cups and the counter match. Okay. Anyway, new products. We have uh, a calendar, of course, a new set of coasters with uh, blue tone. New tote bags, two new designs in our tote bags. And look at my new paintings I've been painting all summer. So we look forward to seeing you soon. I have a few workshops that are online that you can sign up for in December. And what else do we have going on? Um, oh, we have an exhibit at the airport, a piece in the airport exhibit that's, that's going to be up uh, this week. Uh, I was cover artist for Music Fest, which is very exciting. That begins next week. All those wonderful musical talents that are coming to the valley. And um, last but not least, Pearls of Wisdom. And today's Pearls of Wisdom are from Cher, whose real name is Cheryl Sarkeesian. And uh, she said, until you're ready to look foolish, you will never have an opportunity to be successful. So here we are, looking foolish. Thanks for joining us. We hope you'll come and see us during Hidden in the Hills. And we wish you all happy fall. Bye-bye.